Hey, what's up everybody? Lawler here and I hope you're all having a wonderful start to 2021. In today's video, um, I recently saw a post on the subreddit, I think it was, talking about how Sportsnet had put out a top 20 plays of 2020. For those that are unfamiliar with Sportsnet, it's basically a Canadian broadcasting company owned by Roger. I've actually had the privilege to go and commentate from the Rogers Stadium in Toronto as well. So uh, pretty cool to see them getting involved and I guess... The reason why I'm looking into this and the reason why I want to react to what's going on in their top 20 is I want to see how much a major broadcasting company is paying attention to the Rocket League scene. And this is more so like a future thing where as Rocket League becomes more and more popular, the attention of and the representation of Rocket League to the mainstream is actually pretty important. So not only are we just going to kind of see what they think is the best, I mean, it's always fun to see like a top 20 uh to see kind of just exciting goals over the last year but um i want to see if they left out any notable ones from this year or if they pick some that i may value differently because you never really know how they source these like do they just kind of look at the most viewed clips or how they go about finding these clips rather than just saying like yep uh these are the ones we like the most but before we get actually into the top 20 clips if you guys enjoy the content as always make sure you guys give it a thumbs up hit subscribe and turn on notifications uh, we have hit 27,000 subs, so I do greatly appreciate the love and support there. And if you'd like to support me any further, easiest way to do so is in the description. You can find links to all my social media, sponsors, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes some of the clothing I wear, you can find a link to that as well, all down below. That said, let's get into the video. So Sportsnet Top 20, we've got 20 clips we're going to go through. We're going to rifle through these real quick. They are back to back to back to back. So it's going to be a pretty quick reaction as we watch and see how these play out. And we're going to do them in order. We'll Starting with 20, let's see what happens. Magnus in the midfield gets it over the top. Oh, of this is Magnus. Continues just to keep this ball floaty. Can God smell a find this touch? No. Dumb. Oh, so dumb. Okay, so starting off good at number 20, Magnus in a 1v3. He does a second jump to recover there and then just the air roll hit so it keeps going in that's pretty nasty the other thing that's gonna be cool about this is if we get a bunch of different clips we're gonna see a bunch of different commentary styles as well which is always exciting to see that was gross that was pretty slick well done magnus what's up at 19. so we got corelli 16 shots for rogue now and first killer in a dangerous position with full boost oh yeah i remember this plays it to himself off the floor usually you see like a ceiling pass but instead he smacks it off the bottom and then plays it back in a shot supersonic and somebody else wow supersonic and jorby what a shot i'm gonna go back and look at that one Jesus. Squishy with a nutty shot. Coming Why is Squishy the even there? Of the defense. Gonna jump down. Gosh. This is during the offseason, too, during Covert for Dazarin. This is like one of the first iterations you got for energy. Still can't score a single goal. They've been attacked for a minute and a half. And now yeah, it's the other end for the counterattack. Oh. Incredible goal. What an angle off the backboard. From the side wall, gets the flip reset. Yummy Cheeseman and uh and Stumpy Goblin. How is how is that 17? He wins a 50 challenge. He's going up just perfectly horizontal on that wall. He wins a 50 over Alpha, dunks him, gets a flip reset, plays that on target, recovers on the back wall, jumps off Doomsy Dish, and gets a goal. Dom. God Jory is. That should be much higher than 17, in my opinion. They started off so strong, but NRG Turtle. Been resilient now. They have absolutely and Wave Punk. Three goals straight Flip reset. Nope, just a clean air dribble. Jeez, oh energy over Envy. envy right now. So what's crazy and about this touch, and I don't know if you'll see it, is when he air rolls at the last second here. So by air rolling it here... God, I'm going to have to slow this one down. His first touch is super important. So if he puts any forward momentum on that, it puts possession away from him. He's got to find a way to basically keep it close. Because if he does that, it forces the defender not only have to go up, and it forces the defender out of net, but the only way that he can control it with it having that much speed is he's got to find a way to neutralize that. Um, and a way to do that is basically to put momentum in your car going the opposite direction while still colliding with the ball. Uh, think of it in a dribble. If a dribble and the ball is going this way, 
and you basically turn real quick and then bump into it, the ball will kill in spot. So he's just doing that in air, which is absolutely nuts. So that air roll completely kills the ball. But what's even crazier is not only does he kill the ball and keep possession close, but he still does it enough to where he's able to recover and then have... Per okay, I can't take waypoint seriously. But then have perfect air control over the top past another defender. It's only like three only three touches, but it's still like it's still disgusting. That first touch is super clutch. First touch, perfect. I don't know if he stalls with that or not with a flip cancel, but it's just so smooth. Look at how clean that looks. Oh man. Yeah, they don't even pay attention to the initial the initial touch is the only reason that thing's possible. Vitality can bounce back. Very peak. Really again. Trying to do it himself. Gets demos for demoed for his efforts. Here's Kadok. His turn. Off the Throws ceiling. Shot set. Maybe one more touch. Kadok. What a goal from him. First pop Hello. over the ceiling. Flip reset. Oh, he gets a flip reset. Okay. So that shot probably would have been saved. So the first touch, the first touch initially past shows that is fantastic. Plays it over the top, the off the reset. ceiling. It allows him to pass it to himself. It's the same thing as using a backboard. Season three meta was backboard and out. People are basically just seeing the ceiling as like another object that you can pass it off of. We saw from first killer using the floor, but usually that's where people are. So usually the ceiling is now kind of the go-to self pass nowadays for setting up a double touch in a regard to backboard and out. Now they're just going ceiling and down. So kind of just another unique way. What's crazy about it is after that, he manages to recover, get a flip reset here with all four wheels. And then because of that, He's able to hit it and push it to the side more so the player challenging misses. They still get a touch on it, but because it's over to the side of the hood, it still redirects in. That's that's nasty. Oh, we still got 14 to go. Jesus. Game four. Yeah, I might get out of reach. Oh, the Galaxy Racer boys. Calling the time of death that would have been on that week. So oh. oh <laughs> helicopter spin fake. Oh. Oh that god, that's pretty. Brilliant. It just looks so oh smooth. God. If you watch this from his perspective, it's just so smooth. Oh my, <laughs> oh my god. Brilliant. So it's a ceiling shot. Oh so he still has his jump here. Instead of taking the immediate shot, which he could have played at like far post bottom right. Instead, he fakes really? it. Does a helicopter spin upside down. And then when he has the perfect angle and the defender who's in the kind of in and out save challenges... He then uses his flip to then shoot and also cancels the flip to kind of give it like a scooping motion and a little bit extra oomph. Oh, delay the flip. Give him the 360. Oh, man. That's nasty. Squishy delayed that flip for a very long time. Now we got Shogun. Justin wins the challenge, wins a second one. Oh, yeah, we saw this. We saw this. Okay, he's going to draw it. He's going to go in and Jacob bump. Boop. He gets the goal. Yeah, we saw this in a recent video. Um, this is just Justin kind of doing the optimal thing in every circumstance. He wins three 50 50s, sets up a teammate with a pass, draw to another defender, bumps out another one, and then secures the goal. Secure. Obviously, use it loosely here. Nasty. Along their own back wall, and absolutely complete performance from Rogue in game one. Charlie, you got this? Oh yeah, I remember this. Oh, so oh, dumb. Okay. No, okay. No, no, wait, hold no. On. Absolutely no we way. Need silence. See, what I don't get is why Jorby, who usually goes way crazy in goals, is like so taken back and quiet in this. Usually Jorby just goes off. This is Jorby and Turbo. So for Jorby to be quiet in this, kind of weird. But this goal is insane. Let's break it down again. So first killer and Turbo double commit in the corner. It forces their third and Kronovi to challenge, Absolutely right? Complete. So Kronovi gets there. He pinches it and it goes up in the midfield. Turo with 57 boosts manages to back off. Turo and first kill actually double commit for this. Turo's still in the air. You can see him right here. But it's a pass over to first who recovers off the ceiling. So immediately makes a pass and recovers off the ceiling. Like this is how you know it's one of two things. Like it's either totally on purpose and calculated that he's trying to go for this. But it also just gives the situational awareness for a player to know that no matter whether this is going to be a shot opportunity or a passing opportunity or not. It is better to pass this over to a teammate in space and recover off the ceiling because if he needs to get back to the ground, being able to reset off the ceiling and then jump straight down. So we'll just jump straight down and do like a double jump towards the ground is going to help him. Because jump isn't an association to always upward lift. It's based upon where your like car is oriented. So if your wheels are facing up, you're going to push away from that. 
it's just how it works it's kind of a weird situation but yeah this is actually pretty crazy to see immediately get the flip reset keeps his boost going so he propels himself forward off the ceiling and just that was dumb so dumb my rocket league career life are you kidding me first killer what no i no boost you disgusting monster what is happening what was that what was that that's not fair dude i have lost all emotional feel dumb it is very dumb oh this is during the brawl this is my tournament hit him with a gimmick hit him with it oh that was like that little Spin a Rooney here. Look at this. Little 360 no scope. Let him hit it with it. Just a little poop. Get him. <laughs> just... Wait, did he get a piece of Justin too? Yeah. Okay, so Red Enterprises, which is. God, who's even on that team? Red Enterprises, Gimmick, Torment, and Illusion. Oh, this is Illusion still. That's right. So he's got Garrett challenging him. He's dodging a demo. He's got one in net, and then he's got one who's going to be rotating back post. Pop dodges Garrett, fakes the challenge. It's a demo on his player he could pass to in Torment. So you've got a goalie and then another one next to him. You got Squishy and Justin here. So Justin got the demo on the third. So there's no pass. So it has to be a solo. And Justin should be able to continue to rotate through to help out Squishy. He gets underneath it. And the flick is actually, I think, a little bit off. But because it slows it down, it makes it super awkward. So he does get a bump. And then he also gets Justin too. So he gets a double. He gets a. He dodges a demo from Garrett. Flicks it and slows it down. And then gets a double bump to go in like that little spin of rooney here look at this little 360 no scope let him hit it with it just a little poop. get him <laughs> just wait did he get a piece of justin too he got a piece of everything there dumb right back around they don't know which supersonic way. and somebody else it's ssg comes blazing back to tie it up and send game three into typical flip reset the fake and then he bounces off okay so it's supersonic and stacks so goes up flip reset doesn't use it and then just immediately recovers off the ground and puts a shot in i don't think that one's all that high i i don't think that one should be all that high like i think it's a good shot it like it's super smart from typical creating space when you're a really good player and people know your capability and in this case typical is regarded as one of the best in north america People know he can do pretty much whatever he wants with the ball. And because of that, when he goes up for an aerial and gets a flip reset, everybody's like, oh crap. He's going to use his flip reset and then play it off the backboard and go for a double touch or something. And instead, he fakes out the defender altogether. Oh so flip reset forces Hoxer to jump early. So he fakes out Hoxer, but then lands perfectly and off the bounce just turns it straight into a dribble again. And then as soon as memory challenges, he takes a shot and plays it past him. Again, just because you have the ability to do something doesn't mean you have to. Typical full example of that. It's clean, but I don't think it's like a top 10. Like you look at Jordy's shot, like, I don't know. All right, we got Wave Punk, probably achieves. Or Turtle. Oh yeah, this is the flipper set from Smilla to make K-Dop on goal. The flippy off the backboard, bump. This is deemed the CJ has to be a goal. Yeah, Wave Punk and Achieves. Oh, man. We saw this in the last video I did when I did a top 20 play thing. Or top 25 in, in uh, RLCS or whatever it was. And uh, we talked about that. That's another pass. Another pass. Oh, yeah. I remember this. Dumb. Let's go back and count. So this whole setup is actually pretty crazy because it comes from the midfield. That Garrett passes it up. So Garrett passes it up to Justin. Justin's going away from the goalie, so he's going to try to redirect it back inside. The difficulty is with his touch, it's actually going to be pretty light. So Arsenal's in a really good spot to save this. But he still gets enough pop, so it plays it up high. So now that everything is made awkward, Squishy comes in pretty early and gets another touch. Unfortunately, it's not there. But then Justin just still has plenty of boost from the deny. And just one, two, three, four. Dumb. Just planted to himself off the wall. This one goes up. He just picks up the hundred boost. One, two, three, and four. You got it. Good eyes. Justin's cracked. Best online player in the world, probably. Good save. First killer gonna grab the corner boost as well. 
Off the side. And then a bomb. And he takes it. Oh, bam. <laughs> Love space, man. <laughs> so, an interesting choice in these touches, too, because he's about to be challenged almost immediately. So he plays that really hard. How does that touch happen? Good save. First killer. Okay, so he just gets underneath it and pops it. Because he pops it so hard, the challenge is off. Usually when you're reading that sidewall, you expect it to kind of hug a little bit harder. So that early challenge is actually really good. Uh, but first plays it well up high. So it pops it off. He then looks like he wants to go for a ceiling shot. Based on his trajectory, it looks like he wants to roll off and go for a ceiling shot and place it here. But because it pops out, he doesn't. He jumps off, gets underneath it, and he's waiting for a touch. He needs this player to commit. And J Russ, I think that is. Plays it over the top. It's a pass. The shot. He has ball cam probably off at this point. So he's looking for the guy ahead of him. He's going for a bump on the last goalie. That's out. It's actually a pretty good save just because it does stop the trajectory, but it still is just too much. And first killer puts it in. That's super clean. Ba bam. It's completely body shock. Gotta love 1v1 players, right? Brilliant turtle. Are we going to overtime? Pinch. Unless Another pinch. Oh no, that didn't. I'm surprised oh, that didn't hit the ground. Does he have that read? Do do oh, nice shot, Vert. Pass up. Off the back wall. Nice read, man. I don't think it's all that crazy. It's just more of the circumstance. Like, this game was super high scoring. I know this one just kept going back and forth. And it might have been Endpoint that had, like, a crazy comeback in the last, if I remember correctly, like, the last minute was endpoint like tying it up or something like that which was kind of the crazy part about it this is a quarter final so it's a best of five i don't know this exact situation i don't remember off the top of my head but i think if i remember correctly it was endpoint that kind of like crawled back in the last little bit to tie it up this goal to me isn't all that crazy i think it's just the moment and the excitement uh showcases like the fact that it was like an uh, like a crazy turn of events uh within this individual game but the goal itself is just a read off the backboard at zero seconds it's a good 50. He passes it up to a teammate. There's a challenge in the miss. There's another miss. Like, the goal itself isn't anything special. Um, if you take away the storyline from it, at least. Still pretty crazy. Justin doing Justin things. Uh, BOSF. Hello? This is Jamal Jabari now, by the way. Touch off the... Controls it. Gets bumped. Decides to play it behind because everybody's going the other way. Man, that's just this is uh this is a breakdown of rotation. More than anything, look at how everybody chases this, okay? You got one player chasing across field, another player chasing behind him. Everybody rotates far posts. All that player has to do is turn and challenge him right here in this this plays over. This is just BOSF playing poorly. Like it's just bad rotation. Bad rotation and positioning. He's still just able to create chaos. Like when you give this man space, he's gonna punish. The best part is his touch deciding to go in front of it and play it backwards. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty rough from BOSF. It's pretty rough. Oh yeah, we've seen this one. Next one's up Arsenal. Arsenal's cracked. No challenge. And then a solo dribble. He does not care about your shenanigans, j Oh my Jesus. I think it's Johnny and Smellsworth. Yeah, Johnny and Smellsworth. Yeah, Arsenal's cracked. Oh, we've seen that. A, we've seen that a bunch. I'm glad that one's in like top four, top five. It's one of my favorite plays of uh, so far okay, this year like a, or this past year. Or oh, good save. I don't want to be like, you know, any sort it's of probably Ian Chambers Ian and Shogun for the Guild broadcast. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, Ian, Ian and Shogun. Scrub off the ceiling. Dunks and gets another touch. What? How does he? How does he have another touch? Oh, save. I don't want to be like, so no, ceiling. Guinea pig or something. Hold oh, he doesn't jump. Oh, he just like, neutrals you know, it. Sort of pig or something. So most people would try to shoot this, but Scrub doesn't. Scrub just stays behind it. So a lot of times in a 50-50, if you're trying to win it and you want to maintain possession, instead of using a jump or a dodge into it, you basically fake challenge it and stay behind it. So if the ball's where this is, like if this is the ball, 
you have a player that's here that's trying to maintain possession in this case it's scrumcula and then you have another player that's coming to challenge it when this player comes in to hits it if you back off a little bit it'll bounce off your car and then take the least angle of resistance and it allows you to actually to bring that player in closer but because you move back a little bit it shifts the possession in your favor he does this in the middle of the air the hit from alpha goes into scrub's car and then neutralizes in front of him and because he's off the ceiling he still has a second jump available and he just plays it over that's nuts i've never seen that shot that's actually insane to, to not dodge into that oh that's gonna get clipped with me talking about so good food in my uh in my cheek that's so good chicago was bearing down the all right number two he gets devil. can he get back around to it he's gonna play off the wall to garrett he is there justin can he drop it down it's g2 by chicago nope. and squishy what's just oh just off the backboard justin kills it down to squishy it away. gibbs broke this down on rlcs Gibbs broke this down on RLCS, but we'll look at Justin's Justin's like decision making on this to like actually touch this is so dumb what he has to do in order for it to happen. I'm gonna mute and play. So he went up for an aerial, and then when he comes down off the wall, he jumps down and then flips perfectly to neutralize it, recovers on the backboard, and then within a split second jumps again to pass it down perfectly to Squishy for a goal. And this all happens last second too. Like this is a this is Rocket League moment. Like it's so frame perfect for him to do it. Like the amount of mechanics that go into it. Like I know Gibbs was gonna try to break it down at a finite level, but here. So he jumps off the ceiling, gets a reset, neutralizes the touch. So off the ceiling, air rolls by again. This is the second time we've seen in this clip of 20 Justin do this, but he's jumping away from the ball. So when it hits his car. The momentum is being pushed away from the way that it's going. Opposite. For every action, there has to be an opposite reaction. But when this happens, not only is the ball going a certain way, but because he jumps and then disperses that, or he takes that kinetic energy, whatever the heck it's called. I'm not a physics major or whatever. But he's basically neutralizing the, the ball and keeping it stagnant. Because that allows him to keep it close, off the wall, and then immediately recovers and plays it back down. Dumb. So dumb. Justin, you're so good. This is the number one. I have no idea who the commentators are. Every seven from Thamway. Make it two. Alright, commentary not for me. Commentary not for me. But uh, a flip reset in open field. Allows him to keep possession behind it. He's got two defenders in net. First challenge is missed by KDOP. Nobody on backboard either. Alpha and Fairy Peak both being far post instead of one going up high. I just think Alpha is too far back in rotation to be up here and, and play it across. But he actually messes up the second flip reset. He doesn't put a shot on. But it's still... I wouldn't put this as one overall. I wouldn't put it as one overall but it's still a double flip reset like it's still sick it's pretty nuts i do like the diversity of hearing different commentators and all that kind of stuff even if i don't like the call myself i don't know what the heck this is being said so that doesn't help uh because i only speak one language like a stupid american but it is cool to see the different styles as well as all the different plays uh there's some things that remain true like justin being absolutely nuts and people like typical and everybody else and arsenal being super creative it is also exciting to see other names get some of the spotlight uh, despite obviously some players like Justin continuing to return uh, towards the top. Um, I will say that I don't think some of these plays should have been as high as they were, um, but ultimately it is still cool to see that a lot of these plays are extremely good uh, and you are seeing Rocket League as a whole being elevated um, every single year because it is absolutely insane what these guys do. So uh, looking at this, this is Sportsnet's top 20 plays of 2020 for Rocket League. It is awesome to see a main broadcasting company over in Canada start to cover this stuff as well on their YouTube channel. I mean, they've got like half a million subs. So hopefully that is being branched out and we're not seeing a bunch of boomers be like, well, why is this video game on my broadcast and are more accepting of it? And that's kind of what we want. We want long term to see the mainstream start to um, appreciate and enjoy the game that we all love as well, because the more people and the more eyes we have on it, the bigger and better it gets. So 
with that said if you guys enjoy the content if you guys enjoy me doing this kind of stuff questions comments concerns drop those down below give the video a thumbs up hit subscribe turn on notifications and we will catch you next time peace